than you are. New York State Racing Parimutuel Wagering and Breeding Law, Section 102, provides that the New York State Gaming Commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the governor by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Five members having been confirmed by the New York State Senate affords the commission an ability to establish a quorum and undertake action. This present meeting of the commission is now called to order. Ms. Secretary, will you please call the roll? John Crotty. Present. Peter Machetti. Here. John Beklemba. Here. Barry Sample. Here. Todd Snyder. Mr. Snyder had indicated his unavailability due to a business commitment out of country. Uh, Ms. Secretary, we please let the record reflect that a quorum of qualified members are present, thus enabling the transaction of business. Also, please note that two-way audio and visual communications have been established between the two meeting locations. Given the absence of a designated chair, would the members like to select someone for the purpose of presiding over today's meeting? I nominate Peter Machetti. Second. Okay, Mr. Machetti. Consideration of minutes for meetings of uh, the meetings of June 27, 2016 is the first item. The minutes of the commission meeting conducted on June 27, 2016 have been provided to the members in advance. At this time, I'd like to ask members if there are any edits, corrections, or amendments. I'm not hearing any. Madam Secretary, please let the record reflect that the minutes were accepted. Next, I think we have the uh, report of the executive director, and that's Mr. Williams. Okay, thank you. This afternoon, I'd like to provide an overview regarding the development status of the three commercial casino projects, discuss the Saratoga Thoroughbred Racing Meet, and provide an overview of the forthcoming commercial casino regulatory proposal. First, as we've previously discussed, Del Lago has two defined stages of construction. The initial stage of construction includes the casino, the event center, back of house area, restaurants housed inside the casino and event center building, the parking garage, and the hotel shell. The final stage of construction includes the interior hotel build out. Del Lago now reports that they are 54.4% complete with the initial stage of construction. During the first two weeks of July, they've averaged a work rate of 2.5% per week, which is a, a, it's necessary for their construction pace of 10% per month to stay on schedule. As to some specifics of their construction, rough grading on the site and parking lot are substantially complete and water has been brought to the site and, elect and being uh, flushed and tested this month. Permanent electric is also on site. Asphalt paving will st start this August. Exterior insulation finishing system is now at 82% complete and cultured stone is 67% complete. Both are expected to be completed by August 1st. Windows are going to be installed sometime this month. The casino slab on grade work is complete, with the exception being the event center slab. Metal framing and drywall ceilings and, and walls will continue through September. The hotel also remains on schedule, with four floors of post-tension concrete having been completed and the concrete structure is unscheduled to be completed by August 19th. Exterior and interior framing are both scheduled to start at the beginning of August. As for the parking garage, foundations are complete and precast concrete is scheduled to start, be started erected in, uh, or on August 1st. Del Lago reports that last month approximately 64,000 man hours had been worked. Rivers Casino and Resort at Mohawk Harbor is progressing on schedule. Their project is being constructed in two phases. Phase one is the low-rise building and consists of casino, back-of-house offices, warehouse, the event center, and garage. Phase two is the hotel building. Phase one steel and miscellaneous metals are now at 88% complete and concrete is at 78% complete. They also reported completion percentages for several major construction components. Roofing is at 92%, fireproofing at 70%, framing and drywall at 35%, plumbing at 25%, HVAC at 21%, and low voltage electrical at 15%. Rivers also reports the precast of their garage is now at 69% complete, and that overall the project is 33% complete, which is up from 19% last month. 
To date, the project has produced over 101,000 man hours. Montrain reports that they have fully completed the mass excavation and are at 72% complete for site retaining walls, 92% complete with site utilities, 90% complete with foundations excavation and site grading, 92% complete with a pre-cast concrete garage parking structure, and at 35% complete with the site electrical and underground plumbing. This summer, they report that they will start erection of the structural steel for the hotel and podium, start the installation of the central utility plant and the concrete slabs for the hotel. Early this fall, they anticipate commencing the start of roofing and the installations of the concrete slabs for the parking garage. Montrain reports that during the month of June that they expended 31,000 union hours on the work site. With respect to Saratoga, the New York Racing Association opened its 40-day summer meet at the Saratoga Racecourse last Friday. The meet features 69 stakes races worth a record $18.725 million and is anchored by two big race days, the first on August 6th and the second on August 27th. The former will feature the Grade 1 Whitney Stakes, the Grade 1 Test, and the Grade 3 Wyatt. The latter will feature the Grade 1 Traverse Stakes and five other Grade 1 races, including the Sword Dancer, the Ballerina, the Forgo, the King's Bishop, and the Personal Ensign. The Grade 2 Boston Spa will also be contested. Racing is conducted Wednesday through Monday, concluding on Labor Day, which this year is September 5th. With respect to commercial casino rulemaking, today the Commission will consider one rule proposal. Next month, however, we anticipate a substantial rulemaking agenda, as staff has either circulated or will soon be circulating a great number of drafts for pre-proposal industry comment. These drafts include accounting controls, cage and count standards, electronic gaming devices and equipment, monitoring control systems and validation, standards for gaming devices, slot tournaments and progressive gaming devices, and table games. After that package is considered, the sole remaining necessary rule proposal would regard alcoholic beverages. Finally, I want to remind commissioners that at the conclusion of today's meeting, we will be taking a site visit to the Rivers Casino at Mohawk Rock Harbor here in Schenectady. It's my understanding that we'll be joined at the site by Rush Street Gaming Chief Executive Officer Greg Carlin and Rivers Mohawk Harbor General Manager Mary Cheeks. I'd like to thank all staff at Rivers for accommodating our visit today. So, to follow up, it's rulemaking for us, right? So, New York State Racing, Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law, Section 104.19, authorizes the Commission to promulgate rules and regulations that it deems necessary to carry out its responsibilities. Thus, the Commission will, from time to time, promulgate rules and rule amendments pursuant to the State Administrative Procedure Act. We have six items for consideration today. Mr. williams -Rod. For Commission consideration as item 4A is the adoption of revised proposed regulations that would amend the thoroughbred racing restricted time periods to the permissible use of two drugs, dimethyl sulfoxide, better known as DMSO, and diplofenac. The Commission had proposed such amendments at its March 12, 2014 meeting and revised its proposal most recently at the January 26, 2016 meeting. The revised proposal was published in the State Register on June 8, 2016. The purpose of the proposed amendments was to make the restricted time periods for DMSO and the other drug consistent with the per se regulatory thresholds for the 24 drugs that the Commission adopted and that became effective on December 31, 2014. In response to public comments from the Racing Medication and Testing Consortium and the New York Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, the revised proposal allowed for race day topical use of DMSO. State Equine Medical Director Scott Palmer and New York Drug Testing and Research Laboratory Director George Malin each opined that the race day use of DSMO does not pose a threat to the racing integrity or the safety and health of racehorses and supported permitted topical race day use of DMSO. The revised proposal reflects RMTC and NYTHA's comments 
and following consultation with Palmer and Malin, includes a further revision limiting other methods of DMSO permitted use to 48 hours before racing, only an oral and intravenous administration. Only one comment was received during the revised proposed public comment period. The Jockey Club expressed support for the revised proposal. Staff recommends adoption of the revised proposal as a permanent rule. Commissioners, uh, any questions on the adoption of thoroughbred restricted time periods for various drug rules? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adopt these rules? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. For commission considerations, adoption of a revise of a revision to a commission's horse racing rules in regard to the use or removal of hopples for standing bred horses. Hopples are leather or plastic straps that go around a horse's body and legs to keep a horse on gait, either pacing or trotting. This proposal would allow the trainer discretion when entering a horse to race or change whether a horse will use hopples or not, subject to oversight by the commission judges at each racetrack. The disqualification rule would no longer require the judge's permission for a horse's first use of hopples. Instead, the program would be required to report any changes in a horse's use of hopples. The amendments would also allow a trainer more flexibility to change hopples as appropriate for local track configurations and conditions without incurring the time and expense of requalifying a horse. The text of the proposed rule was published in the State Register on June 1, 2016 meaning the public comment period ended July 18th. No public comments were received. Staff recommends the adoption of this proposal as a permanent rule. Any questions on the adoption of the standard bread use of Hopple's rule? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adopt these rules? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion on the motion, anyone? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. As item 4C for commission considerations, the adoption of a revision to the commission's coupled entries rule for standard bred races. The proposal provides that for stakes races of 25,000 or more, separately owned horses having the same trainer may be uncoupled, although horses owned and trained by the same trainer will continue to be coupled entries. For stakes races of $100,000 or more, all horses with <coughs> common ownership may be uncoupled. In both cases, the uncoupling of horses would be subject to the discretion of the presiding judge to couple the, the entries in the interest of the wagering public. Adoption would make the standard bread rule consistent with the thoroughbred rule. The text of the proposed rule was published in the State Register on June 1st. Two public comments were received, one from Tioga and Vernon Downs Racetracks, and the other from the Director of, the, of Operations and Publicity at the Hambletonian Society. Both comments favored adoption. Staff recommends adoption of this proposal as a permanent rule. Any question on the adoption of these rules? Just uh, refresh my recollection, Bob. When did we do the thoroughbred rule? Oh, jeez. When was that? Um, three years ago. Two, three years ago, right? Uh, I remember it coming up. Yeah. No, I think it was calendar 2015. Thank you. But what was some time ago? And that therefore they'll be identical, right? Yes. Good. Thanks. Any further discussion? How many hundred thousand dollar trotting races are there? There's not many. There's a really the Sire Stakes is a premier racing that comes out where you have many races that are over a hundred thousand at first, but there's not that many. Less than ten? Oh, there's more because of Sire Stakes alone. There's there's eight there, so there's a few, and then you got um, you got the one you got. There's a few of them. They're about fifteen, I would say. Anything further, John? No, no, no. no. That was, in case you didn't see it, John, that was Ron Okram, our, our Director of, of Horse Racing and Fair Mutual Wagering Activity. Anything else? May I have a motion to adopt these rules? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion carries. For commission consideration is the adoption of a revision to the commission's claiming rules to permit a claimant to void a claim when samples collected the day of the claiming race test positive for an impermissible drug administration. The current rules recognize positive tests performed post-race 
and TCO2 samples as bases to void a claim. With the recent adoption of per se regulatory thresholds, which apply to all samples collected on race day, these proposed rules would contemplate drug positives from samples collected before a race, as well as after, for grounds avoiding a claim. In addition, adoption of the proposal would conform the standard bread to the thoroughbred rule, which permits a claimant to void a claim based upon an equine drug positive in the, the race preceding the claiming race, when the positive drug test is revealed only after the claiming race. The Commission authorized the proposal of these rules at its April 25, 2016 meeting. The text of the proposed rules was published in the State Register on June 8, meaning that the public comment period expires today. No public comments have been received to date. In the event a comment is received before the close of business today, staff will promptly inform each commissioner and seek direction. Staff recommends the adoption of this proposal as a permanent rule. So, commissioners, any questions on the adoption of avoidable claims based on race day sample rules, subject to no receipt of substantive comments before the close of business today? None. May I have a motion to adopt these rules? So moved. So, second. Second. Any discussion on the motion, gentlemen? I'm hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. For commission consideration as item 4E is the adoption of rules that require a gaming facility licensee to test and certify slot machines and other gaming equipment by licensed independent testing laboratories prior to operation. The proposed part addresses the following topics. The standards for licensing and operating independent testing laboratories, notification and reporting requirements, and the recording and reporting of equipment inspection and certification results. The proposed part also makes the proposed rules applicable to the systems and equipment used in the conduct of video lottery gaming. The commission authorized the proposal of these rules at its May 23, 2016 meeting. The text of the proposed rules was published in the State Register on June 8, meaning that the public comment period expires today. Thus far, only one public comment has been received to date from a representative of Gaming Laboratories Incorporated, a prominent independent testing laboratory. The comment suggested that the commission include language requiring evidence of financial independence. Staff reviewed the comment and notes that the law, under the law, independent testing laboratories are casino vendor enterprises which must qualify under the standards of, for qualification of a casino key employee. Under that provision, a laboratory must establish by clear and convincing evidence their financial stability. To establish such, a laboratory must complete the vendor license application which includes financial suitability information. In the opinion of staff, there is no need to duplicate specific financial requirements in this regulation. In the event of any additional comments are received before the close of business today, staff will promptly inform each commissioner to seek direction. Staff recommends adopt, the commission adopt this proposed rulemaking as a permanent rule. Any questions on the adoption of these rules? Subject, of course, to uh, no receipt of substantive comments before the close of business today. Hearing none, may I have a motion to adopt these rules? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. For commission consideration of proposed amendments to the rules for licensing and registration of gaming facility employees and vendors. As you may recall, the commission previously authorized the proposal of parts 5303 and 53, through 5307 on July 6, 2015, and authorized adoption of such proposed rules on September 10, 2015. During the licensing process, staff had several conversations, both within the agency and with prospective licensees, about clarifying aspects of the regulations and believes several amendments are warranted. These clarifi clarifications include, among other things, requirements for updating a submitted application, the process and circumstances under which an applicant is denied a license or registration, where a licensee or registrant whose license or registration has been revoked may reapply, the statutory disqualification criteria to applicants for non-gaming employee registration, the term for a non-gaming employee registration, and which vendors 
are not uh, which are not required to be licensed or registered. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Any questions on proposed amendments to our regulations governing licensing and registration of gaming facility employees and vendors? Uh, just Rob, uh, my understanding is that the uh, amendments were as a result of uh, input from the vendors. I input from the vendors and also from our own staff as okay. we've gone through them. Uh, once that input was taken into consideration, were there any of the uh, rules that were still objectionable? Do you understand my question? Uh, I, th I think you're, are you talking about from the initial proposal and the materials? A again? After you made the suggested changes, are there still? Uh, well, that's, that's what these are. There's actually been two different elements of that. One is when we originally proposed those rules, we went through a pre-industry comment period as right. well, or pre-proposal comment period. Right. We had a variety of, of uh, <coughs> input from them at that point, which we accepted some and we rejected some. Upon further the review of that in the intervening year, we've reviewed the rules again, again in conjunction with, with vendors, and have come up with a new set of proposals. Right. Are there any industry concerns? Yeah, there, there are some industry concerns and clarifications that they don't understand how some rules work. <clears throat> the, the interaction of some rules, language has changed over the course of the year, and that's what we're addressing at this point. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? I have a motion to propose these rules. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion on the motion, anyone? Not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. The next item of scheduled business regards adjudications, and we have one item for adjudication. This is in matter of loyal order of Moose Lodge 1407. By notice of hearing dated March 1, 2016, Commission staff initiated a hearing process to suspend or revoke the license to conduct games of chance of the Loyal Order of Moose Lodge 1407 on the grounds that the Lodge had failed to file quarterly statements of Belgar operations for two quarters of 2011, each quarter of 2012 and 13, two quarters of 2014, and three quarters of 2015 for a total of 15 quarters. Under the relevant charitable gaming statutes and regulations, a hearing is required before a suspension or revocation of a Games of Chance license. The hearing officer may then recommend the action to be taken against the licensee. The hearing was conducted on May 20th, 2016. The hearing officer's final report and recommendation were delivered to the commission secretary on July 1st. During the time of the notice of hearing being issued and the hearing date, the lodge filed each of the delinquent reports. But regardless, the hearing officer recommended that the lodge be fined $200 for each of the 15 violations of the obligation to timely file a quarterly statement of Belgar operations for a total fine of $3,000. The hearing officer further recommended that the fine be paid within 60 days. The commission considered this matter at a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a vote of four to nothing to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Now we have new business, old business. Uh, any old business? Anyone want to discuss? There's none on the agenda. Does anyone have any old business to consider last time? No? All right. Hearing none, we have new business. We also have no items scheduled on the new business. Does anyone have any other new business to consider? Just wanted to point out that uh, we, we did discuss the uh, procedures for consideration of the uh, hearing officer's recommendations and uh, talked about revisiting the rules in terms of making them uniform with respect to all hearings and, and all reviews so that uh, all of them could be considered in a similar way. Uh, I don't think we're, we're committed to making them uniform, but at least we're going to consider that and maybe have a proposal for a future meeting. 
We have a bit of discussion about that. Thank you. That's the only item I have. So next, scheduling of the next meeting. <coughs> the next meeting of the commission is scheduled for August 30th at the Humphrey S. Finney Pavilion at the offices of Fast Tipton Company at 415 East Avenue in Saratoga Springs. And we just ask that you advise Ms. Buckley of your availability. So that concludes today's published agenda. Any of the commissioners have items they'd like to present for consideration? Hearing no other items for consideration, this meeting of the New York State Gaming Commission is adjourned.